Oh, fantastic. We have veteran, we have five different veterans groups um, and seniors. We're just starting to pull other cities in, so. Oh, wow. Well, I have a free movie for all of you, so I'll I'll send it to you later. <laughs> okay, great. good. Yeah. Excellent. That would be great to partner up in the movie area, too. Grace. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think people coming. So you should we start? Sure. So thank you so much, Grace Sonia, for coming to join us. We are so excited to partner with ARP to bring educational events to you. And just a quick introduction: Grace Sonia is a community health advocate and public affairs professional based in Silicon Valley, and she leads the community event and educational initiative in the San Francisco Bay Area for AARP. So prior to joining AARP, Grace Sonia was also the Director of Communications and Health Policy at Community Health Partnership in Santa Clara County, where she led grassroots advocacy efforts. So, so Grace Sonia, I saw your, your profile in, 19, in 2013, she was honored with the National Association with Community Health Centers, Betsy K. Cook's Grassroots MP, MVP Award for Outstanding Efforts as an Advocate for America's Health Centers and Patients. So thank you so much for your work, Grace Sonia. <laughs> thank you so much, Tina. Um, and thank you, Bruce. Uh, thanks to Trevon to, for inviting us uh, AARP to deliver this home fit presentation. We're thrilled to be with you. Uh, today, I'm joined by MJ Lee. She's my co-pilot for today. And she's also a fellow certified aging in place specialist. Um, MJ will be in the chat room and I'll be leaning on her expertise throughout this presentation. Um, MJ and I are here to share AARP's tips for making your home a safe and livable place for people of all ages. So just really quickly about AARP for those of you who are just getting to know our organization. AARP is the largest, nation's largest nonprofit, nonpartisan organization dedicated to empowering people 50 and older to choose how they live as they age. AARP has a nationwide presence with nearly 38 million members, 3.3 million of whom live here in the great state of California. AARP is dedicated to empowering people 50 and older to choose how they live as they age. And this is why we are especially thrilled at Tina's invitation to join Trevon's Community Day. So thank you, Tina. Thank you, Trevon. Thank you, Bruce, for all that you do here in the community. So in this unique moment in time, as you all know, we are staying home more than ever. It's the perfect opportunity to stop, take a look around, and assess if your home is somewhere you can safely age in place. Uh, so before we begin, if you haven't already, as a courtesy to your fellow participants, please place yourselves on mute unless you plan to speak. And then, um, also a note, this is an interactive presentation, so please feel free to put your questions in the chat box. Um, MJ will be monitoring the chat room and we'll be sure to take pauses throughout the presentation to get to your comments. So one way to make a home more livable for people of all ages is to incorporate design principles and products that are adaptable, safe, and easy to use. This AARP HomeFit workshop will show you how that's possible. This presentation is actually based on our HomeFit guide, which you can be fat, which you could find at www.aarp.org slash homefit. The AARP HomeFit guide and presentation were created to help people live safely and comfortably in their homes by enabling where they live to be a lifelong home suitable for themselves and others in their household, no matter a person's age or life stage. So the, by the end of our presentation today, you'll be able to one, recognize how a home can be modified to support changing needs at any age, Two, determine which modifications are important for maintaining the lifestyle that you desire. 
And three, distinguish between modifications that are do-it-yourself or DIY or that are best left to a professional. And then please note that uh, to take note of items, I should say, um, with, um, with the green stars next to them. So later on in the presentation, you'll see the slide deck and uh, some items will have a green star right next to them. This is a visual indicator that those items are, uh, could be considered quick fixes or DIY projects. Uh, so encourage you to pay attention to those. Universal design. Universal design may seem like a technical term, but it refers to a simple concept. Universal design is an approach to designing products and environments to accommodate all people, including those with physical, cognitive, or sensory impairments. It, along with livability and visitability, is the basis for the HomeFit Guide and our conversation today. So let's begin with the exterior. Whether a residence is a house or an apartment, its exterior doorway should allow a smooth transition into and out of the property. Many homes have entrance steps, which can make the home inaccessible to a person who uses a wheelchair, relies on crutches, or who has difficulty climbing the stairs. The ideal is for all homes to have at least one zero-step exterior doorway. Zero-step entrances are accessible to all people, whereas steps may be a challenge for those with mobility limitations. And then if a step-free access isn't possible for the front of the home, a side door, back door, or door located inside the garage may be a suitable substitute. Um, if a zero-step entryway can't be achieved, there are ways to make steps safer for all. Steps need to be well lit, free from obstructions, and have railings on both sides. The railings should extend past the last step to ensure a safe transition for all people. So here's another option, ramps. Ramps can be added to be either permanent or temporary. Um, there are many considerations when incorporating a ramp into your entrance, so uh, it's best to consult with a professional on adding a ramp. And then here's another option, a vertical platform lift that should be installed by a licensed elevator professional. Um, earlier, I had made uh, mention of green stars being in the slide deck, so please note the green stars uh, and those that follow, uh, they are indicators of items that are considered quick fixes or potential do-it-yourself projects. So now that we've covered the ways to modify the exterior access for safety, let's talk about lighting. Outdoor lighting is a must for safety reasons. You'll want to make sure that at least one entryway light is installed at a height that doesn't require someone to get up on the ladder to change the bulb. You should also consider adding pathway lighting that will allow visitors and delivery people to safely approach the home after dark. And then finally, prominently displaying your address numbers helps delivery people and first responders find your home. Illuminated numbers or numbers made of shiny, reflective, or glow-in-the-dark material are most visible at night. Um, I'm going to take a pause there. MJ, are there any questions in the chat room about HomeFit exterior recommendations? No, everyone's pretty quiet uh, so far, so there's nothing in the chat. Great. I'll go ahead and move on then, but just a friendly reminder to our participants, if you have any questions, feel free to drop those in and uh, we'll make sure we'll answer all your questions. So let's move on to talk about how smart home features can help in your home. Imagine being able to adjust your thermostat, turn on your favorite radio station, or even add something to your shopping list without having to leave your favorite chair. Now, thanks to advances in smart home technology, all of these are now possible and easier to set up than you might imagine. 
So let me see if I could engage our audience in a quick poll. Um, please type into the chat if you have any smart home features such as Amazon Echo, Alexa, Google Assistant, or Ring Doorbell. Would love to hear if, um, if anyone in our audience already uses smart home features. I'll give you just a moment to do that. Well, and Tina, Tina started off by volunteering that she has Alexa ring and she controls her lights. Um, Janice also uses Alexa. I, I personally use Alexa at home to control uh, interior lights as well as exterior. I have a smart garage door opener and I even have a smart irrigation controller so it knows what the weather is and um, I don't have to turn off the irrigation controller when it's raining. Uh, let's see, Barbara, oh, Janice also has, maybe I said that already, Janice and Barbara already have Alexa. Oh, great. And um, Suzanne has Google, Google Assistant as well as a video doorbell. Um, and Barbara, yeah, Barbara uses some of the apps on the cell phone with her Alexa. Yolanda, ah. Yolanda uses Ring and controls her lights. And I'm not sure, it says Rails. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I thought my glasses were off, but oh, she has double rails. Oh, okay. double rails. Oh, fantastic. Okay. And, uh, and Nam also has rings. So yeah, we, you know, it's interesting doing these seminars or workshops, Grace, Sonia, how many people have Alexa and ring? I would say those two are really like top around this area. You know what, I've noticed that as well. And, um, you know, I'm so pleased to learn that folks have adopted the smart technology. Um, you know, in an earlier workshop, MJ, someone had asked, someone had just made the joke or comment like, well, why don't you just get up and turn on the light or turn off the light? And, um, you know, I'm thinking back to when I had sciatica um, this same time last year and how, um, how it really was an effort to get around on my crutches and how sometimes I would get up on my crutches and fall because I just wasn't used to using them and just how helpful um, having Ring or Alexa would have been at that time. So um, all about use of, um, all about these smart features and uh, using them for comfort and safety. Um, any thoughts around using these smart home features? I shared a little bit about my experience. Uh, has anyone shared that in the chat? Uh, I just put the question in there. Okay. I, I know some people, a lot of people actually do have reluctance with smart home features, but it would be nice to hear people's comments about that or, or perhaps how they overcome those, those uh, objections. Okay, we'll give folks just a moment to type in what their opinion is of using smart home features. Or, or perhaps if you go around and recommend the technology to your friends or family, what, what are some selling, selling points that you guys use or, or maybe cautions that you mentioned? Okay. Suzanne is thinking of looking at locks uh, for her ah. home, smart locks, but she hasn't gotten around to it yet. And uh, Tina mentions that one issue with smart home devices is that they're not always that easy to set up. And she does that for her parents. And Barbara also mentions that Alexa is good, but it is hard to know what all the features are or what are the, what are the things you could control. So maybe that's something we should cover in more workshops. 
<laughs> yeah, I I agree. Um, there is also the good old fashioned asking a friend or uh, or consulting a professional for help. I think when it comes to smart home technology, that is okay. Yeah, but I I think we've covered that pretty well, Grace Sonia. Thank you. Um, so home-based automation systems. So just to summarize, home-based automation systems and products are able to provide real-time information and perform home-based tasks with little more than an internet connection and a voice command. Um, so just some safety and security tips. Uh, keep in mind that you'll want to ensure that your internet connection is set up with a password. Um, and then also be sure to read and understand the terms of service. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, seeking assistance from a professional is okay, especially if you have concerns about system setup, privacy, and security. So let's move on to the entryway. Whether a residence is a house or an apartment, it ex its exterior doorway should allow a smooth transition into and out of the property. Safety is of the utmost importance and the last thing you wanna do is fall. So when planning accessible entryways, the most important consideration is size. Specifically, the width of a doorway should be at least 32 inches to allow for a wheelchair to pass through and the height of at least 80 inches. And then when, a me when the measurement is just an inch or so too small, swing clear hinges can provide the needed space. These hinges actually make the door opening as wide as possible by swinging the door completely clear of the opening. Here are more considerations for making your entryway and home safer. If a door doesn't have a glass panel and there isn't a window nearby, a peephole can help residents see who's outside before opening the door. Make sure your peephole is installed at a height that everyone in your home can access easily. A video doorbell can be paired with a smartphone app, enabling a door to be answered remotely and a visitor identified whether or not anyone is home. There are also home fit opportunities for handles and locks. I think someone brought this up earlier. A lever style door handle is easier to, new, to use than a doorknob or a thumb latch handle for those with mobility concerns. And then um, as for locks, a higher tech solution uh, for an entryway lock is a digital door lock. It eliminates having to find or fumble with a door key. A battery powered or hardwired digital door lock can be opened by using just a code or a fingerprint. Some devices also work with a key while others provide a way to lock and unlock a door via a smartphone app or a remote control. Entry spaces. Not everyone has a home with a large formal foyer, but most homes have some sort of transition area just inside the entry door. To promote safety, that space should be free of clutter and provide storage for things carried or worn. Natural light and open spaces also prevent trips and falls and allow occupants ease of movement in the space. Choosing the correct furniture is also an important part of modifying your entry space. You could consider equipping the space with a slim desk, table, or even with wall-mounted shelving to store car keys, wallets, and totes in an easy to access location. Also consider adding storage containers to organize mail, coupons, and devices like phones, garage door openers, um, this is something that we consider a quick fix. It's something that I've implemented for myself. And so I lose my keys a lot less because I've got the storage container right by my door. Also adding a bench to the space provides a location to put on and remove shoes safely. 
Shoe and slipper storage can help to prevent trips and falls, you know, when it's all neat and in one place. And it also keeps a foyer free from dirt and puddles and keeps the space looking tidy. Uh, finally, if there is no closet in the foyer of your home, consider adding wall hooks um, for coats, hats, and purses. I'll take a pause there. MJ, are there any questions or comments in the chat room about entry spaces or doors? Well, Fred did mention that a 36 inch front door is really, a, it, it doesn't just help with wheelchairs, but it also helps you when moving things such as a large refrigerator. So yeah, if you're, if you're going, going to replace your front door, you should always go for the wider width. That is that is definitely a pro tip right there. Um, yeah, if yeah, knowing that you could get a refrigerator in and out is is a good marker um, for how wide your doorway should be or a really, really big couch. Great. Thanks for sharing that, Fred. Let's move on to the kitchen. So now that we've entered the home safely, let's visit one of the most popular places in the house. My favorite place, the kitchen. Home fitting interventions can make the kitchen safer and easier to use for every diner, visitor, or cook. There are many things to consider when making a kitchen accessible, and those range from quicker fixes to harder remodels that require professionals' help. Some quicker fixes for the kitchen include reorienting adjustable lighting and adding stick on under cabinet lighting to shine more light on commonly used workspaces. Modifications that require the help of a professional include cabinet changes. Since frequently used items are best stored between hip and shoulder height, Adding lower level cabinets with pull-out shelves and extra shelving for storing items of different heights makes them easier for people to access. And then other professional renovations can include open shelving, which makes items easier to reach, uh, see and replace after use. Um, and then also adding in drawers of various depths uh, to maximize space and storage of various items is a helpful tip as well. Handles and hardware can be relatively easy to modify, but may require the help of a professional in some instances. First, consider the handles on your existing cabinets. D-shaped handles like the one that's pictured here and drawer pulls um, are easier to grasp than knobs. And then lever style, light touch, or sensor faucets are both easier to use and more sanitary than ones with turn style knobs or handles. When considering appliances, there are many options with helpful features to choose from. So although placing the microwave above the oven may be a space saver, it can also be dangerous. Lifting and lowering heavy and often hot cookware is difficult and can result in spills and injuries. A countertop microwave oven is safer and easier to access. And then when thinking about stoves, consider those models that have the controls at the front of the unit to save users from having to reach over hot burners and pots. And then a French style refrigerator, um, this type of uh, refrigerator with this type of doors that opens in the middle, it makes it easier to see and reach for what's inside. Um, and those of you who've opened the Home Fit Guide, uh, you'll find these suggestions as well as other types of kitchen modifications um, on pages eight through 10. So before we move on, MJ, are there any comments about the kitchen? Uh, no, nothing at this time. Okay, so let's move on to the bathroom. Uh, the bathroom is an area that merits additional considerations when thinking about your home home fit. Uh, water on a bathroom floor is a slipping hazard and often an invisible one. 
Falling in a bathroom is painful and potentially life-threatening because of the hard surfaces. So think about the bathroom, the floor, the toilet, countertop, the tub, all hard surfaces. So when considering making changes to your bathroom, remember to keep in mind ease of use and safety. First, shower seating is a relaxing safety feature for all people. Additionally, an adjustable height handheld shower head makes the shower customizable for users of different heights and abilities. In the bathroom, a wide doorless shower with a zero step entry makes the shower accessible for all, including wheelchair users or anyone else who needs a person's assistance. Next, let's talk about the toilet. A comfort height toilet is the best option for wheelchair users. And then if you need to add height to an existing toilet, consider a toilet base riser. Um, a toilet base riser is a base for an existing toilet that adds three and a half inches in height. And then finally, a commode chair is the least expensive option for helping someone get on and off the toilet. Um, they're often used by people for temporary situations or when remodeling isn't an option. Uh, as you can see here, the device sits right on top of the toilet, raises the height of the toilet, and, and provides, I should say, arm support without needing any structural changes. Uh, and these devices are usually less than $50. So now we've all experienced sliding on a wet, slippery floor, and that's why we want to ensure that the bathroom includes a grab or assist bar for someone to hold on to when they feel unstable. Uh, there are many high quality grab bars uh, on the market that can be integrated into common bathroom features such as toilet paper roll holders and soap dishes like the one shown here. The correct installation of grab or assist bars is vitally important for safety. They should be installed into supportive blocking, which is best done by a professional. If they are not securely, um, if they're not installed securely and correctly, they can actually pull away from the wall when someone puts their full weight on them. Also keep in mind that there are unsafe products out there sold as grab bars. Um, these use the clamp or suction cup um, to secure them to the wall or tub. Uh, these should not be used because uh, as you can imagine, if you pull your full weight, if you put your full weight on them, they could easily come off. And then research has also indicated that grab or assist bars are safest when they are horizontal to the floor rather than vertical or installed at a diagonal. And then your home fit guide actually has more information on safety modifications in the bathroom on pages 22 and 23. So I'll stop there. Um, MJ, any questions about the home fit options in the bathroom? Yeah, actually, we, we have a few. Um, one, a uh, couple people, Yolanda and Gary, are asking where would people buy some of the things we've shown, such as the toilet riser. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, things Gary was specifically referring to, but I, I know the toilet riser you don't see very often. I understand um, that those are available at uh, stores like um, Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, something that I do is I'll Google search it. And uh, usually Google search is great um, with suggesting places where you could buy things. So I would also start there as well. Okay. And um... Yolanda asked if AARP has uh, a handyman or carpentry crew to help install things like grab bars. So I did put in the chat a reference to Rebuilding Together, Silicon Valley. Um, I couldn't remember if you're, you're going to mention that as well. You are? 
Um, thank you, MJ. So I wasn't planning on mentioning oh, okay. it. So I'm right. so glad that you brought it up there. Um, Rebuilding Together is a fantastic organization to consult with. They are a nonprofit organization and uh, provide home repairs to folks who um, are in need and who are looking to make these safety modifications in their home. Um, Rebuilding Together, Silicon Valley. Um, if you Google them just like that, um, you'll be able to find their website or their um, just off the top of my head, the um, their URL is rebuildingtogethersv.org. And I also want to say there is a um, rebuilding together organization in San Mateo County as well. That's right. They're actually in Redwood City. I I didn't have that URL. There's a, uh, another question about um, how does the transfer bench work? That's ah, kind of how, hard to talk through that. Yeah. So, um, is the question how to move someone on a transfer bench, or how it can be helpful? It it just asked, or Jane just asked, how does the transfer bench work? Ah, um, how is it helpful? Oh, how is oh, it helpful? You. Oh, oh yes, thanks. <laughs> thank you. Um, so it's helpful in that um, if you have someone who has mobility issues, so for example, someone in a wheelchair, uh, and you know it's not possible to use. <laughs> well, I wouldn't recommend like wheeling a person in, but having a transfer bench allows that person to still use the shower um, a lot easier because you could just transfer them over easier like on a bench versus um, you know using like a chair. Does that make sense? So bench is easier to uh, like support somebody and to transfer them there versus um, you know having to move uh, someone onto a chair in the um, in the shower and the chair not necessarily being stable. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm just trying to look at it from the viewpoint of I don't have a walk-in shower. Mm -hmm. I have a tub shower. And ah. I was wondering if in the long run, using something like that would be safer getting in and out. Yes, um, the photo that, so I'm going to circle this here, that would be if, you know, if you're not going to remodel um, mm -hmm. your bathroom, that this type of transfer chair would be the option for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Great question. Say, Grace, Sonia, we did have um, a comment from Fred saying that he has a bathroom skylight that helps, um, you know, giving him light light without having to remember to turn the light switch on. And um, later later on, we're probably going to talk about the motion sensing night lights that are great. But actually, I don't know if Tina and Bruce are listening, but if if you guys have answers to this question about a resource for Redwood City uh, people to get um, handyman services. If you could put that in the chat or, yeah. or come online, that'd be great. Actually, I'm um, on the phone right now. Uh, we have a rebuilding together and I'm going to see if I can get them set up for one of our next upcoming Zoom classes here. Oh, OK, that's so wonderful. Thanks, Bruce. Yes, MJ, that is wonderful. They're a fantastic organization. And thank you so much for your questions in the chat. Um, it's great to get these questions as um, sharing this information not only benefits the person asking the question, but everybody else in the room. That takes care of the chat for now, Grace Sonia. Great, thank you. Um, well, let's move on to living spaces then. Um, we'll turn our attention to the living spaces in the home. Um, 
Earlier, I had talked about universal design and universal design for living spaces focuses on safety and livability, but also this concept of visitability. So people visiting your home. Here are some tips to make your living space safe for those people who are living there and people who are visiting. One, always anchor tall furnishings to the wall to prevent tipping. Two, secure exposed cords to the floor by using an electrical cord approved adhesive or covering. Be sure to check the cord regularly to ensure there's no fraying or breakages. Three, provide two feet of clear space between a coffee table and a couch so people have room to maneuver while sitting down and getting up. Four, avoid furniture with sharp corners and always secure window treatment cords to prevent entanglement. And then five, secure area rugs to the floor with non-slip mats or double-sided tape. Um, and then in my opinion, if you're not married to your area rug, consider getting rid of it. So let's talk about lighting um, and the electrical and living spaces. Most of these changes, but not all, would need to be completed by a professional. One easy thing to do is to use natural light, like what Fred was talking about in the bathroom, um, during the day by opening blinds and curtains to brighten up the room or the bathroom. Another quick fix is using a plug-in nightlight in outlets throughout the home. The ideal height for switches is roughly three to four feet from the floor. And then rocker style switches that are pictured here make turning lights on and off very easily. Another tip, stairway and hallway lights need to have on and off switches at both ends of the hall and at the top and bottom of the stairs. Light switches that glow in the dark are especially helpful in those areas. And then when placing furniture in a hallway, please be sure to maintain at least 36 inches of passing space so people can use the corridor without knocking into furnishings. Stairways need to be well lit and have railings on both sides. This allows someone to use a cane effectively going both up and down. Um, one easy quick fix idea that MJ had alluded to earlier was to install motion sensor lights. And there are some that, that, are, that she's showing here. Uh, MJ, would you mind getting off mic and telling us a little bit about what you're showing us? Well, this night light is made by Mr. Beams. They're now owned by Amazon and they're motion sensing. I have a bunch of these around my house and there's a smaller version about that high that I have placed on my stairwells. So that's just perfect. I, I, the first step I take onto the top or bottom of the stairwell, it immediately lights up. And that, that's the kind of thing that I think will help you, uh, you know, in your, in your fall prevention uh, fix-its around the house. And it's very cheap and very easy. You can even stick these on the wall. They, they come with some uh, tape. That's great. Thanks so much for showing that to us, MJ, and uh, giving us an idea around how to um, keep our spaces bright, well lit, and safe. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the stairs themselves. The safest surface and covering for steps is tightly woven low pile carpet within padding. Um, a recommendation is to use contrasting colors or patterns to help differentiate between uh, each step uh, from the tread of the next. And then if stairs are uncarpeted, um, always make sure that they have a non-slip surface, such as an adhesive strip or um, securely placed rubber tread. And then as mentioned earlier, railways should extend past the bottom step for safety.
And then when single story living is needed, but not possible, a stair chairlift can be a practical and safe mobility solution. And stair chairlifts should be installed by a professional. And that is the tour of our home fit home. You may remember that at the beginning of the presentation, um, our goal today was to help you identify at least one quick fix that you can take on right away to make a, your home a better fit for you. So at this time, I invite you to type into the chat one to two fixes that you'll consider tackling in the next three months. I'll give you a moment to do that, and then I'll ask MJ what's in the chat. You know, Fred is such a great contributor. Thank you, Fred. So, so he recommends not to put heavy boxes or objects uh, high on a top closet shelf. That, that's especially if you have young kids. But actually, that's true for for anyone. If you put heavy stuff up high, it yeah, it'll have a chance of falling on you. Um, Oh, people are putting in recommendations or, or things that you've inspired them to think about, Grace Sonia. Janice uh, is going to look at a higher toilet. Sally is going to look at sensor nightlights. Um, oh, and uh, well, this is kind of a lead up to another one of our future workshops, decluttering. That oh. That is really key. <laughs> Oh, getting rid of rugs, says Vero. And um, I will put another link into the Home Fit Guide for you guys. And, and it's great to see that uh, so many of you are paying attention, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, thank you so much for your kind attention. I have here up on the screen, and MJ is going to drop a couple of links into the chat um, of AARP resources. So, um, where to find our home fit guide? Uh, there is actually an app that AARP has created for iPhones and iPads called Home Fit AR. The app uses image recognition to identify identify design elements and appliances like refrigerators, uh, sinks and stairs, then employs augmented reality to provide additional information with specific to do's or fixes to make a home more comfortable and safe. Um, and then if you're concerned about home maintenance, please be sure to take a look at the here to stay guide available for for free at the AARP Foundation. You could actually take a self-assessment and search a directory for free and low-cost programs and services near you. Uh, one of those programs being Rebuilding Together. Um, you can also get tips, checklists, worksheets, and more to help you plan, prioritize, and keep your home maintenance uh, routine on track. And then just a final note, occupational therapists and certified aging in place professionals can also be very helpful resources. Uh, these professionals understand your various needs and can accompany um, and can accompany you in thinking about um, aging in place solutions for your home. Want to thank you all for joining us today and for your great tips and your engagement in the chat. Appreciate all your questions. Um, if I know we're at time, it's 1.47, um, but if I could have just one more minute, want to check in with the audience to see if there are any questions. MJ, anything in the chat? Nope. Okay, you. yes, Bruce. Sonia, thank you so much, MJ. Before the audience log off, if you can just help us do a quick poll, that will be that will really help us bring more to you. And then uh, Grace, Sonia, and MJ, we can't wait to have you back for the decluttering session for spring cleaning. And everybody, I just booked um, our local Redwood City Peninsula of Rebuilding together. They will be in our next Zoom uh, community Zoom day on March 24th. Very, very cool, Bruce. Wow. Mm -hmm. Way to just 
get things done. We're out of control. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Grace Sonia. Thank you, MJ. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Thank we'll you. Talk Thank soon. you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Um, great to be here. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, thank you, Trevon community for having us. Um, hope to see you again soon. And thank you, MJ, for being such a great yes. chat monitor and a volunteer great. for AARP. Have thank a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye.